Welcome to my bow build series. I'm so excited to finally be doing this. I have a brand new Bowtech Carbon One here. I've done nothing but just take it out of the box. Um, I got a new set of strings. Like we're gonna do a complete bow build. Every single step that's gonna take this bow from fresh out of the box to shooting your broadheads with your field points at any range you want. It's gonna be a fairly long video series, but I'm gonna break it up into small digestible chunks so that there isn't too much information thrown at you all at once. Um, if you want to follow along video by video, you're going to see every step and I'm going to set this up so that if you're looking for a certain piece of information, it'll be easy to find that particular video within the series to get the information you need. So thanks for being here and we're going to get started. So the very first thing we're doing today is changing my strings. Now you don't have to change strings. There's a few reasons I do, but I want to point out right off the bat that when you get a brand new bow, the strings that come with it are perfectly fine. You don't have to do it. It's another expense added on top of the massive expense that getting a new archery setup is anyways. So don't feel like you have to do this. I do it for a few reasons. A, I'm a string builder, so I like to shoot my own strings. Um, I like to have that bit of color customization since I was 16 or 17, I've been shooting the electric blue. Um, I just really like it. Um, and so I got a brand new set here. We're gonna put it on um, step by step. This is how you change string. So the first thing is that obviously you're gonna need a bow press for this process. If you're looking at doing a full bow build on your own, you probably already have one. So the very first step will be to take your new strings and cables. Now, when you get them uh, from whoever you've got them from, they're gonna come with uh, my note here because I just literally just made these but they're gonna come with something holding the ends together now when you untie that or cut the loop or whatever it is be very careful that you don't lose uh, the direction that each end loop was you don't want to add or take away any twists because the string builder has put the ends together in this way specifically to keep a certain length and certain number of twists in the string so don't lose that so what I do is I just I have a post over here you could see earlier in the video, I just keep them on until I'm ready to use them. So I like to do my cables first, just there's really no reason. I just kind of like to work from the inside out. So you're gonna press your bow and when, when you press your bow, I always like to pull up right on the center of the string just to make sure nothing falls off the track. And I'm gonna go until I can see that this roller guard here has no tension on it, right? If I back it, back it up again you can see the tension is bending that roller guard and as I press it that comes out and at a point it'll completely stop right there and now we're totally free and that's loose and that's what you need so my strings already falling off in fact I'm just gonna take my string right off because I can tell it's gonna get in the way now I recommend you keep your old set again they're gonna come off it, they're gonna come off in a certain orientation and it's a good idea to take those end loops like that, tie them together, and then you'll never lose that twist for uh, if you ever need these again. But it's good to have that backup set because you already paid for them. So now you have to get your, your cables out of your roller guard. Some systems are a lot easier than others. Some you can just pop them out and you're done. Most, uh, most modern systems will have some sort of screw holding the roller guard in. So that's exactly what mine has. I'm gonna undo that screw. And one thing I'll mention here before I take this apart, the string is really easy. You can't mess up putting a string on, but cables can be really tricky and every bow system is different in the way that the cables feed through the cam tracks and especially in the way that they come off the cam and the orientation that they fit into your roller guard, right? This cable fits on the outside of this roller guard. This one goes underneath this cable and on the inside roller guard. That's really important to note um, and it matters a lot. You do not want to get that mixed up when you put your new cables on. So what I will do is I take my phone and I will film and kind of talk my way through the entire cable system setup. I'll say, you know, here's this cable starts here and you can, I'll follow it with my finger and it runs over top of this cable and it fits the outside roller guard and, and so on and so forth. So you always have that factory setting to reference when you're putting it back together. So I'll pop my roller guard off. And now what I'll do is I'll bring you guys around the backside to show you what I'm looking at on the cam tracks. So here is 
the cable setup for this bow and it's a really strange one to be honest you can see the cable does this crazy almost figure eight before it comes off the top here so that's going to be really important that i don't mess that up this is i would say more complex than most setups so i got my cable here forgive my talking because i'm biting the other end so that i don't lose the twist but what i'm going to do is I've already taken pictures of what this looks like in case I lose it. As long as I do it while it's fresh in my mind, I shouldn't lose what this looks like. So I've got it off the post there. I'll just follow the cam track. Pop that one out. And I'm putting that on a post over here so that I can save those cables if I need them. And now I'm going to go in with the new cable. And just follow exactly what the other one did. Once I get it around the post, you want to snug it up as best you can. And there you go, that side is done. This will all tighten and straighten out a lot once we retension the bow. But I can look at the other side and compare it and tell that I got it right. So that side is good to go. So I got that side on and now I can follow in the other end here. This side is much simpler, that's why I'm not showing you because it's, if you could follow that side, this is like kindergartner could follow this side. And you will notice I'm not saving those like I just told you to, but that's because I'm a string builder. Um, but normally you would save the loops and not lose any twists and save those strings. So there we go. Now that side is in too. Now I'm going to go ahead and just change both cables, change the strings and, uh, and be done with it. But when I was doing my first few string changes quite a few years ago, I felt more comfortable with putting one cable on putting the bow back together, drawing it, shooting it a few times. If you need to make your timing adjustments for the new cable, you can totally do it one at a time. It is the safer way to do it rather than taking the whole bow apart and then trying to figure out how to put it back together. Um, so you can do that if you're comfortable, just do it all at once like I'm about to. I'm gonna do the other cable. It's absolutely identical to the one I just did. And then I'll show you guys the string. So I got my other cable on and while the string is still off, I am going to use the free space I have to put my roller guard back together. So I know because I just took this apart what orientation these are supposed to go in. This top cable goes over top of this one and fits the outside roller guard. Again, I have a video on my phone of it if I needed it. You need to have that because, I mean, every bow system is different and even though you can look at it and say, I know how it goes together, I'll remember that. It gets complex and it really matters. So go ahead and put that back together. And you can put a little bit of blue Loctite on that bolt if you want. I usually don't, but blue Loctite's never a bad thing in archery. So just snug up all the ends, make sure it all looks right before I go and put the string on. Now the string, is really straightforward. You're going to have a side that has uh, usually a piece of just extra string material. That is perfectly separating the two halves of the string for you to put your peep in. So that is the top side of your bow and that's really important. If you get that wrong, you'll just have to make the switch later. So I was just put one end between my teeth to hold it. And I mean, you've probably spent a lot of time in a tree stand or blind walk, looking at how your string follows the cam track. So it, this, this part isn't difficult at all. Once I get it on that side, I pull to keep tension. You always wanting to keep tension on this because once things start to fall out of cam tracks, they can, it can become a little bit of a tangled mess. 
and there we go. I'm just gonna check everything and make sure that the cables are correctly in the cam tracks, that all the loops are around the end posts because, oh, and right here, I have one slip off. So that's awesome that I checked because once you start to depress this bow, if something is off, you can have a big problem. So just confirm, and that's why I pull up on this prematurely because it gives me an early indication of what this is going to look like when I depress. So I'm confirmed that I am good on every post and I'm going to start to depress the bow. And there we go. That is a string change. So that's how you do the string change. Um, I understand that this is not quite the complete process in the sense that you have nothing here. You can't actually draw this bow. Um, so there are a couple ways you could go about it. Oftentimes I'll just put a D loop in there roughly in the right position so that I can, I can draw the bow if I want, I can shoot it if I want. Um, but the next step will be setting your knocking point, tying in your knock sets and tying your D loop. I'm going to make that part two of the video series because if you want that information, but you don't want to see me put the strings on, then that's available for you in a separate video. So for the next step, go to part two for knocking point, knock sets and D loop.